Hi, I'm Mate Joel from the Basel Practitioners Private Limited. We're planning to share our knowledge on the Basel guidelines through a series of newsletters and videos. The Basel Committee on Banking Supervision is the primary global standard setter for the prudential regulation of banks, and it provides a form for regular cooperation on banking supervisory matters. These guidelines are being implemented in 28 jurisdictions since 1988. The BCBS has released its latest guidelines on capital adequacy in December of 2017. These guidelines are called the Basel III post-crisis reforms, but popularly referred to as the Basel IV guidelines. The BCBS monitors the adoption of its guidelines across jurisdictions and publishes this report semi-annually. The latest such report has been published in May of 2019. Hence, I thought of sharing the adoption status of Basel III and IV for each BCBS member jurisdiction as per the latest report. In this video, I would like to talk about the evolution of Basel guidelines, Basel IV implementation progress, and public disclosures implementation progress across jurisdictions. But let's first answer, what is the Basel Accord? The Basel Accords is a set of recommendations for regulations in the banking industry. The purpose of the Accords is to ensure that financial institutions have enough capital in account to meet obligations and absorb unexpected losses. There are four Basel Accords, Basel 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's now dive into each of the Basel Accords. The first Basel Accord, Basel 1, was issued in 1988 and focuses mainly on capital adequacy of financial institutions solely based on credit risk. The second Basel Accord revised capital framework, better known as Basel 2, serves as an update of the original Accord. It focuses on three main areas, minimum capital requirements, supervisory review, and market discipline. Together, these areas of focus are known as the three pillars. In Basel II specific, capital adequacy is assessed considering credit, market, and operational risk. Basel III was developed in response to the deficiencies in the financial regulation revealed by the financial crisis of 2008. Hence, the refinement in capital adequacy framework, stress testing, and market liquidity risk frameworks. It is intended to strengthen the bank's capital requirements by increasing the bank's liquidity, decreasing the bank's leverage, and improving the quality of the bank's capital. In January 2013, the BCBS has published BCBS 259, Principles for Effective Risk Data Aggregation and Risk Reporting. The 14 principles of BCBS 239 were developed to strengthen the bank's risk data management, calculation, and reporting practices. Effective implementation of these principles is expected to enhance risk management and decision-making processes at banks. Possibly guidelines address the shortcomings of the new leader part of the capital adequacy ratio, along with liquidity issues. And as part of the Basel IV guidelines, the BCBS has planned to address the denominator part of the capital adequacy ratio, in other words, the RWA computations. Over a period of time, Basel guidelines have increased its position in computing the capital adequacy of banks. The coverage of the risk types is comprehensive, as initially it started with only credit risk, and now it includes credit, market, operational, liquidity risks and IRRBB. Overall, the Basel guidelines have become more robust in regulating the banks. As of today, BCBS has 45 member comprised central banks and bank supervisors from 28 jurisdictions. Let's now understand the implementation progress of Basel 3 and 4 across these member jurisdictions. First, let's see the progress in Asia, Africa, and Oceania. But before looking at specific data, let's know how to read this report. Each member country is given a number based on if they've implemented the specific Basel standard. So, one means that the country doesn't have the guidelines for the specific standard. Two means that their guidelines are still in the draft phase, they are yet to complete it. Three means that the country has published the guidelines but haven't implemented them yet. And four means that the country has implemented the guidelines for the specific standard. For example, Australia doesn't have the guidelines for the capital requirements for equity investments and funds. Moving on, the adoption of the guidelines is represented by the color of each standard for a country. So green means that the country has successfully started the adoption of the guidelines. Yellow means they're still in the process of adopting to the guidelines. And red means they've breached the timeline given by the BCBS deadline. Let us now specifically look at the revised credit market and operational guidelines adoptions. First, let's see the progress in Asia, Africa, and Oceania. We can see that only Indonesia and Russia have issued the draft guidelines of STT credit. Another thing that can be noticed is that Saudi Arabia has issued the FRTB market risk final guidelines. And Indonesia has issued the draft guidelines for operational risk. Let's now analyze any one particular country. Let's use India, for example. 
There's a lot that can be deciphered from this particular data. We can see that adoption is completed for capital buffers, margin requirements for non-centrally cleared derivatives, CCP capital requirements, SACCR, leverage ratio based on 2014 exposure definition, DSIB surcharge, intraday liquidity and large exposures. We can also see that IRRBB is in the process of adoption and India is lagging behind on the adoption of revised security frameworks and TLAC. India also hasn't started the consultation on revised credit, market, and operational risk. Now let's specifically look at the revised credit market risk and operational guidelines adoption for Europe and America. Here we can see that only the European Union has issued the draft guidelines on FRTB. Let's now analyze the adoption specifically by the US. Here we can understand that the adoption is completed for capital buffers, margin requirements for non-centrally clear derivatives, leverage ratio based on 2014 exposure definition, and DSIB surcharge. We can also see that the CCP capital requirements, SACCR, TLAC, IRRBB, and NSFR are in the process of adoption. We can also see that the United States is lagging on the adoption of revised security frameworks and capital requirements for equity investments and funds. And it has also not started the consultation on revised credit, market, and operational risk. Looking at the report, we can expect all of the member countries to release their draft guidelines in Q4 of 2019 or Q1 in 2020 as the adoption timeline is fast approaching. The BCB has released guidelines for public disclosures in three phases. The first phase in 2015, second phase in 2017, and the third phase in Jan 2019. Coming to large exposures, excepting South Africa and Mexico, most of the member countries have issued their reporting guidelines. The revised public disclosures covering capital, RWA, liquidity, key metrics are at different stages of adoption. Coming to TLAC, TLAC guidelines are generally applicable only in case of GSIPs, so it is mentioned as any for many countries. Also, FRTB reporting guidelines are issued only by Saudi Arabia and European Union as the adoption starts by 2020. In general, if you look at Hong Kong, Korea, Saudi Arabia, Switzerland, Argentina are fast in adopting the guidelines. This is the source that has been used to make this video. If you have any other questions, please feel free to email us and visit our website for more info. Thank you.